it's Mike here, and today I'm gonna do the cinnamon protein powder challenge. It's not like the normal cinnamon challenge where you try to eat a whole spoonful dry of cinnamon. You do that and then you hit the protein. Let's see if I can do it, guys. Hey, check this news. All cinnamon and protein powder is contaminated with lead. You just tell me this now? Hey, it's Mike Aaron. Today, is the U.S. food supply in a lead crisis? The recent headlines we've seen throughout October have been riddled with, or should I say contaminated with lead titles. No, there are a lot of sensational headlines, but that's the job of the news. So we need to follow the lead lead and get an answer for ourselves looking at the science, etc. And in particular, we're talking about headlines around protein powders plant-based protein powders as well as cinnamon. And we're gonna look into where this lead is actually coming from in the supply chain. Some of it is a bit expected. Another one has a more sinister source. So let's just go. Hopefully my hat is not distracting. I'm getting random gusts of wind here. So I'm doing hat today. So we have FDA reports of high levels of lead and cinnamon. We have a consumer reports report of high levels in protein powder. And then earlier this year, we also had 25,000 baby food products recalled due to high lead. This is getting a bit out of control, but we have different levels of contamination here we need to break down. First, I should just say that the lead testing in the US is super spotty in these foods. And from the Clean Label Project, which has looked at lead levels in the past, they say, quote, surprisingly, there are no comprehensive federal regulations specifically targeting dietary exposure to heavy metals and foods, with most safety efforts focused on physical and microbiological contaminants. So we end up relying on these third parties, like the Clean Label Project, like Consumer Reports, to give us answers to actually be testing foods, which is frustrating because it's really the job of the government, you'd think, and it probably is just the cost of one Hellfire missile to do all of the Consumer Reports testing on food. That's just a guess. We're about to get to those Consumer Reports results in a second. Some of you have probably already seen them, but I just have to mention that Consumer Reports has a bit of a history of finding the lowest possible limit for safety concern and running with that. I think it's good to err on the side of caution, but in this case, they went with a California Prop 65 level, which we're going to talk about the nuances. And Consumer Reports echoes why we should be a little concerned. They said, quote, the FDA has not set any action levels for lead in protein powders or shakes, which is what they looked at. The WHO has published no guidance on lead in supplements and through its joint committee with the FAO of the United Nations, they said there is no level of lead that is safe to consume weekly. So more on that in a bit, but let's just get to these lead levels in protein. We have a bunch of different brands, some that I've used, for example, Naked, which has a plant-based protein and the lead levels were concerningly high, at least the highest of pretty much any tested. And we'll break down the units here and they try to do it in a more digestible way with a bit of a speedometer saying whether you're over the amount that you'd wanna have once per week or daily. And they're saying zero servings per week limit has been hit with this Naked Nutrition one, as well as Huel, which is one of those food replacement companies like Soylent that I've talked about in the past. And then we have some that they're like, yeah, let's just do this once a week or less. And those are Garden of Life, organic plant-based protein, Momentist plant protein. They say two and three quarters is okay for carnivore mass from muscle meds. They definitely know who they're marketing to. And then scrolling on down, we have Vega, which is sort of middle of the pack here for concern at we could take nearly four per week, according to them. And that is good to see because Vega in the past had some high levels of lead in their vanilla protein, I believe. So they got a lot of flack for that and they probably cleaned up their supply. And then skipping further down the list, we have some proteins that are vegan or not that you're able to take more or less once a day like six times a day for cost organic superfood plant protein. That's a vegan one. So this is where we have to get into the limit that they chose, what other limits are, and the confusing units that are going on here because some other reports are using parts per billion or parts per million, and some are using milligrams per kilogram. And then they have micrograms per dose. And in this case, that's 0.5 micrograms per dose in the product. And that is coming from California's Prop 65 warning for toxins in foods or reproductive issues. So first I wanna say that this 0.5 micrograms level is super conservative. We can look to the European limit. European Food Safety Authority is 3000 parts per billion, which of course is three parts per million or three milligrams per kilogram, a level that the CR's food safety experts say is far too high to be health protective. And then we have this California level, which is a 1,000-fold safety factor, meaning that 
it's giving you a 1,000 times buffer to eat an amount that is going to harm you. So it's extremely conservative, the most conservative number that exists. Other than saying zero, which of course some people will advocate for. But yeah, they say, quote, about 70% of products we tested contained over 120% of Consumer Reports level of concern for lead, which is 0.5 micrograms per day. So our three quarters of the protein powders out there are gonna kill you. So where do we get that 0.5? Well, a lot of it is meant to just be a trigger for there to be a warning label saying that this type of toxin, for example, lead, is in the product. So it's a little bit interesting to apply it to protein powder lead levels like this. And while editing back, looking closer at this naked mass gainer, which is the highest one, I noticed that a few things were off, like the 1200 calorie serving that they have, which is 350 grams more than any of the other ones, just in terms of the amount. Yeah, that is the suggested serving size, but this is like the majority of calories required for somebody. And I thought, let's check this compared to the European cutoff and someone please check my math, but it translates to 7.8 micrograms per 315 gram serving, which is just 0.025 parts per million, which is less than 1% of that European cutoff for supplements. So there's a different perspective. But one thing that I think they did fairly with the units was they went and said, okay, we have this FDA interim level of lead that we don't wanna go above in terms of our daily dietary intake. And that you can see from this chart is 8.8 .8 micrograms per day with about 5.3 being the average intake from diet in the US. But they're saying that you could hit nearly eight extra micrograms from that naked nutrition's mass gainer, putting you at 13 micrograms per day. So this is where I'm like, all right, if you're unlucky and you're buying the most contaminated protein powders that they're testing here and having it every single day, then it's not looking great. But the average person who's eating protein powders, vegan or not, is very unlikely to do that. That being said, I do agree with their sentiment of saying, hey, there's a little bit too much of a protein craze right now. People are trying to slam down protein powders probably more than they have to, and that they should instead focus on whole food sources of proteins. They did throw in things like tofu lentils and legumes in there in general, but then they were like, oh yeah, eat whole red meat. So now it's time for me to speculate about Consumer Reports as an organization. I think they fall into three potential categories. One is that they are an organization that makes a quarter billion dollars a year in revenue. And part of that could be coming from scaring people in the realm of health saying, choosing these really low cutoffs for toxins in food, finding that we're exceeding those cutoffs and then saying, hey, be scared and scroll down to our suggested $15 donation button or just join to be a monthly contributor to them. Or from the other perspective, maybe they are one of the last bastions of independent food safety that we have and we should just let them do what they wanna do. But the reality is they're probably somewhere in between those in the third scenario of they're probably doing some good, but maybe causing some fear they don't need to cause as well. And so yeah, you might've noticed that some of these protein powders are higher on the list. So are people on a vegan diet automatically getting just completely lead laden? I'd love to have a study looking at the lead levels of vegans versus meat eaters, but the closest thing we have to that in the US is this study that looked at Western diets, which they defined as characterized by high intakes of processed meat, red meat, refined grains, high fat dairy products, French fries, butter, and eggs. They broke the groups up into thirds and they found that the highest third of Western diet consumption had not just higher blood levels of lead, but also higher bone levels of lead, up even higher kneecap or patella levels of lead. You gotta know what your knee lead levels are. You need to know your knee lead level. So it appears that the people who are eating the most meat and dairy and eggs, animal products in general, have higher levels than those who are eating less. But this is where I can imagine a scenario that is a concern, and that is people who are bodybuilding that feel like they need to have three or four scoops of these products per day, if they have the wrong one, that could be an issue. And that is where I personally would be concerned here. And I will say the Clean Label Project, which I quoted earlier, did a more or less similar report, finding that about 50% exceeded that Prop 65 safety threshold. And they, of course, have some products that they certify as being clean, which they probably have to pay to get the certification for. So we can sort of combine these two databases to figure out which ones have lower levels of lead. Of course, some companies are saying, here are our low levels of lead. It's rare, but that's out there as well, and you have to trust them. Okay, let's move from protein into the area of one of my favorite, if not my favorite spice, and that is cinnamon. We're not gonna get into the whole real Ceylon versus Cassia topic today. We're just gonna talk about off-the-shelf cinnamon, and this time we're not talking about a third-party organization. We're talking about the FDA 
the U.S. government themselves, and they have a cutoff for safe levels of lead and spices at one part per million. And this is something that the news is ongoing on. Just in the last couple of days, they expanded the list of brands that had levels that exceeded one part per million of lead to 16 different brands. Thankfully, not the one that I just bought recently. Let's see how fast we can do this. It's Roche Tea, Hey Tay, Dura, Wise Wife, that is a ridiculous name, Jiva Organic, Superbrand, Asli, El Chilar, Markham, Swad, Supreme, Tra Supreme Tradition, Campania, Elador Oriental, ALB Flavor, Chazada, Spice Class, and La Frontera. I threw a chart together and we can see that all of these are somewhere between two and seven parts per million of lead. It's not looking that good, but then I also want to put that into perspective. For an applesauce cinnamon wanabana puree that they had that was taken off the shelves in the past, and that was at 2,270 up to 5,110 parts per million of lead. And that was in 2023. And so there's probably some products out there that are that high, always lurking, be afraid. No, but that just puts it into perspective and that is one that will likely give you short-term symptoms as opposed to just chronic long-term exposure, which is what we're more concerned about here with things like reproduction and brain health. But now we have to get to the why of all this. Where is this contamination actually coming from? And the source that I was previously familiar with was just industrial or sort of pollution contaminants, having leaded gas in other countries, sort of falling onto fields, being in the dust, etc., bioaccumulating into various plants, or in some cases actually getting directly on the leaves. That's another scenario. But boy, was I wrong, and I never continued to be disappointed in <laughs> the supply chain and people. And that is because we have people purposefully adding lead, in particular lead chromate, which enhances that reddish cinnamon color as if there aren't easier dyes to use, as well as making the product heavier and therefore more valuable when they're selling it in bulk. So thankfully the deeper research in this video led me to that discovery, pun completely intent, pun shamelessly intended. But RFK Jr., our health secretary, has actually stated that these red lead-based dyes are healthier than red dye number 40. I'm totally joking, but it was a believable statement, wasn't it? So obviously this is an illegal practice to add lead chromate, and it has in particular been found in foods in the past, like in 2023. I don't believe the FDA has tested directly for it, or they haven't mentioned it. It seems unlikely that it's bioaccumulation from soil alone, but maybe not impossible. You know, from some quick calculations, there would have to be insanely high levels of lead in the soil to reach two to seven parts per million of lead in the finished bark product, which is what this cassia cinnamon is. Like with the most aggressive bioaccumulation numbers, we're talking about basically having to grow this stuff in straight industrial slag <laughs> soil. So it's very unlikely that this was reached with just like standard levels of soil contamination that we see around, which means that this could also be from some equipment or packaging contamination using non-food safe containers that contain lead or having other equipment that's lead contaminated or perhaps having like lead dust around left over from when they were spiking it with lead in the past. Like, I don't know, anything is possible with these supply chains. Capitalism. Now the concern that I personally have is, is the brand that I'm using actually safe or has it not been tested yet? Because it's just like a couple days later, they're like, oh, here's a couple more. So I'm guessing that they're still testing more and releasing more. And again, I am concerned about these levels because they're over the FDA level, which, well, still a little bit conservative, like it's not gonna just fry your brain reaching that level. It's higher than the other levels we were talking about earlier, but it is a different food product in the sense that you're eating way less of these spices in terms of volume and weight than you are protein powder. So we gotta have different levels for each types of food. But this made me speculate as to whether or not organic cinnamon was better. There was only one organic company there that tested high. Organic can of course still have high levels, but it seems less likely. However, less of the total cinnamon out there is organic, so is that just proportional? Intuitively, I'd have to say that there's a bit more surveillance of organic products, hopefully a bit more testing of things like lead and that the risk would be lower. So maybe it is worth spending the extra $2 or so on organic cinnamon at this time just to hedge your bets. That's what I did. And then also perhaps cinnaminimize your cinnamon consumption. <laughs> Guess I'm that lame. Yeah, you don't wanna be doing that cinnamon challenge eating an entire spoonful, which if you get the wrong product could definitely put you up there because that's probably like 100 servings. So in the end, in terms of the protein powder concern, I'm a little bit less 
oh my gosh, warning bells going off here. Again, they chose a somewhat more conservative cutoff. And yeah, there are some that are bad. Stay away from those, the highest ones. Unfortunately, we don't know every single brand out there's level, but you know, perhaps if you're somebody that's a vegan bodybuilder or a bodybuilder in general, like you want to be getting one that is verified to be low if you're making it a major part of your diet. That's my master's in public health opinion on the public health matter, at least. And then in terms of cinnamon, I think it's more of a valid concern, especially if people are eating quite a bit of cinnamon and they have one of those brands. And especially looking at that chart, if you got one of these brands up around seven, yeah, you want to throw that out. You want to burn that cinnamon and then you'll have just like a little ball of lead left over at the end. And again, these independent organizations are choosing these super... 1,000 fold conservative safety levels and going, hey, look, it's higher, donate. I don't know. I'm still happy that these organizations are around. I think they're mostly doing good, but there comes a point where it's like, hmm, why are you always choosing the craziest threshold possible, whether it's even parts per billion for some other chemicals that I've seen? But all of this opens up a lead can of worms saying, hey, our FDA testing, our food supply testing in general seems to be completely inadequate. In this situation, they've decided to test some cinnamon and they've found a bad result. How much are they testing all the time? It seems to be not very transparent and very likely not nearly enough ever. So I want to increase that if possible, government. And of course, I want to know what you guys think about this down below, but are you even able to think at this point if you've been slamming down some cinnamon protein powders? <laughs> or is your brain just fried? Is it just a block of lead? And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.